Arachim. A person can declare Kerem his consecrated animals, be they Kodesh Koshim or Kodesh Kalim. If it is a nether, it gives the worth of the animal. If it is a Nadava, it gives itself, it gives its benefit to him. If one had said, this ox shall be an Ola offering, what well, value how much a person would be willing to give for this ox and offer it as an Ola offering that, that he is not obligated to bring? A Makor, whether it is unblemished or blemished, one may declare a Kerem. How do they redeem it? The redeem is evaluate how much a person would be willing to give for his Makor, in, uh, uh, that it would be given to his daughter's son or his daughter's sister's son. But Bishmael says one verse states that you shall consecrate, while another verse states that one may not consecrate. It's impossible to say consecrate, for it is already stated that one may not consecrate. Um, it is similarly impossible to say not to consecrate, because it's already said been consecrated. Therefore, you must now say you may consecrate as, at, it as a consecration of assessment, but you cannot consecrate it as a, cons a consecration to the altar. Okay. And one who sells his field at a time that the yovel is in force is not permitted to redeem it before two years, as it says, according to the crop year shall he sell it to you. If it was a year of wind blast, a yellowing, or if it was a Shemitah year, it is not included for him in the count. If he plowed it or he let it lie fallow, it is included for him in the count. But Elazar says if he sold it to him before Rosh Hashanah, when it was full of produce, he may garner from it three crops in two years. Okay. Um, yeah, one more. Who's not three? Oh. Uh, yeah, we got it. Yeah, Mechara Larishon. So. No. All right. If he sold it to the first one for a mana and the first one then sold it to a second one for 200 zoos, he records only with the first one, as it says, to the man to whom he had sold it. Um, if, he, if he sold it to the first one for 200 zoos and the first one sold it to the second one for mana, he records only with the latter, as it says, to the man that is to the man occupying it. He may not sell a distant field in order to redeem one nearby or a poor one in order to redeem a good one. He may not borrow it in order to redeem it or, or nor may he redeem by halves. In the case of the temple treasury, all of these are permitted, and this is the stringency of the common man over the temple. Okay. So now we switch to the subject of houses in a walled city. Now this is a this is a, a, a very different talacha from uh, from other fields and uh, and whatever because in in the in the walled cities that is cities that were walled from the time of Yeshua Ben Nun, um, purchasing a house there is is permanent um, after a year. The if a person um, if, if that, there's no yovel, there's no yovel that returns it to the original owner. If he sells it. He's got one year to the day, and we'll see more details on that in the Mishnahs. But he's got one, one, one year to the day to redeem the to redeem the field, and then he and then he gets then he can force the 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 buyer out. But if a year passes, it's finished. It's over. There's and and he never gets it back, and it, 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 the property re reverts entirely to the to the ownership of the of the buyer, even after your bill. I'm surprised about the the. Uh... That it's not it's not covered under yoga because yoga covers all the plants and fields and all yeah, that's right. plants and fields plants and fields yovel covers but walled cities are have a specific halacha which is a gazer sakasa it's just written in the torah this is this is the rule okay hamocher buys bevate arechoma so if he sells a house in a walled city hare ze goel miad so he is allowed to redeem it immediately. So let's say he got the money and then he, he changed his mind and said, no, I want it back. And he gives back the money and says, I'm reverting the, reverting the sale. Or even the next day he says, ah, I've just, uh, I, I, I've changed my mind. He, he can do it throughout. It doesn't matter when the next day, the same, or that day, he can he can chase the buyer off. Okay. And he is entitled to do so for an entire 12 months. It actually has the appearance of ribis, but it's not classified as ribis. Why? Because let's say he wanted to organize a thing where, uh, where he wants to borrow money from his friend. And his friend says, look, I, I, wanted, I don't want to give you money for free. Uh, let's find a way of charging you ribis. Let's say he, he wanted to do it like this. He could say, okay, fine. So I'll sell you. I'll sell you my house for the amount that uh, that uh, for, for my house in the walled city um, for the amount that I need. You come and live in it, right? 
and then six months later I'll come back and I'll and I'll pay you back the the same amount that you lent me. So why is it yeah. revenue? Because he's pay, because not only did he get the money, but he got the the use of the house for six months. Revis, right? Okay, so it looks like revis, but this is actually not revis because this is exactly what the Torah says you uh, you have to do. Okay. What happens if the seller died? You all know his son has the right to redeem it for the full year. And if the purchaser died, then you can redeem it from his son. So this is not a year based on Rosh Hashanah. This is a year based on uh, on, on the day on which he sold it. So he gets, so he gets exactly a year from that day. Okay, Shneimar. He must have a full year. And when so the, what is the word tamima coming to say? It's to say that we have uh, if you have a, a leap year, as we have coming in the coming year, then um then we include the ibor in the in, in that uh, in that we include the extra month, and so he's got 13 months effectively. Is Rabbi Omer, huh? Is this a leap year coming up? Yeah. Oh no, thank you. Rabbi Omer yitain lo shanavi ibura, and so Rabbi Yehuda Nasi says uh, actually, um, in order to make this uh, a full year, we we actually going to work on a solar year, three hundred and sixty five days, not on the not on the Hebrew year because uh, so that is not the halacha. The halacha does follow the chachamim that it's according to the Hebrew date, and if there's a and if there's an intercalation, then the extra month belongs to the the, the seller is allowed to come and use that to redeem. Okay, throughout the thirteenth month. Okay, Mishnah Dalad Higia Yom Shnei Masar Chodesh Velonigal. What happens if you reach the end of the of the uh, the last day of the twelfth month, and the and the property hasn't been redeemed? Haya Chalutlo. That's it. It transfers ownership forever. It doesn't matter whether you purchased it or it was given to him as a gift. Forever. So if the, the buyer is getting towards the end of his 12 months, and he's thinking, I could make it the whole way. Uh, and, and, and he starts hearing rumors that uh, or another seller is gathering together the money to come and redeem the to come and redeem his property. And he says, you know what? I don't want to be here for him to redeem it. And he absconds. He locks up the house, disappears, and goes uh, goes off to Eilat. <laughs> okay. So now he's now he says, aha, you can't get me, you can't redeem it, then I'll I'll have the I'll have the property forever. Uh, so what what would happen is that Hilal Hilal made a made a takana. She hey that the one who redeems, if he can't find the person who, who who he sold it to, he can't to redeem it, then he goes to Bastin. He and he and he hands over the money to Bastin and says, "Here you are. This is my redemption money for my property." He has shover esadelis v'nichnas, and he can go and break down the door and move into his property again. And when the when the buyer comes back and says, "Hey, what are you doing here?" He says, "No, I redeemed it. Go and collect your money from Bastin." Okay. So anything that is within the walls is considered uh, property that's within the walls. Except for actual fields. Like if there's a wall and then there's a field inside the wall, a field is 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 not the same as as a, any other kind of property, but any other kind of thing like a like a well or an olive press or uh, whatever else that's inside there. If it's sold inside a, an irkama, it's got the same din as a bias. The only th the only exception here is a sadeh. Why is that? Because um, uh, because the pasuk says become a bias. It has to be something that is at least similar to a bias. Like it's got to have some sort of structure, but a field is not uh, is not at all similar to a house. Rabbi Meir, Meir Afasados, but Rabbi Meir says no. Even the the fields that are in the in in the city are considered like the houses. Um, um, and it and they will and they will also have that that year thing according to Rabbi Meir. The halacha follows the Tanakama. Um, 
Bais habanoi b'choma. So now the case of Rachav. Remember Rachav who... Uh, right. in Right. She, right. So she had a house in the in the wall, and this is exactly actually where they where, where people are going to learn their various halachas from. So if a house is inside the wall, Rabbi Yehuda on there, he says no, that's not that's not within the walls. It's it's uh, it's not inside the it's not on the inter- interior of the walls, and therefore it's got it's got a din like anything else outside the outside the city, and it will have and the yovel will have to take effect on us and everything, all the other rules. Um, Rabbi Shimon Omer Kosel Achitzon Um I actually need to take this call. Just give me a second. Sorry, now that was uh, just an automated call, as it turns out. I'm getting fiber. Yay! <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So, so, so the Machlokis says Rabbi Yehuda says that in, that Rachav's house is not like a like a house inside the city. Rabbi Shimon Omer Kosel Achitzon Hu Chumaso. The outer wall is its wall, and um, Halacha. I don't know. But at any rate, they both they both learn it out from uh, from the case of Rachav. Um, so uh, why is it says that they they all come from from the same pasuk? So Rabbi Shimon says, So he says, oh, so she's living inside the city. But Rabbi Yehuda says, So they both they both see the same pasuk and uh, and read it differently. Um, the, I don't see any halacha pasuk over here, but I doubt it's actually going to be shy to anyone anyone who has such a shayla. The Rav and the Rambam says that the Holocaust follows the rule of Rabbi Huda. Okay. Okay. Now that's it. All right. Um, okay, base. Hey, base. If one says, I take upon myself to give the value of my arm, we evaluate him to determine how much he is worth with the arm and how much he is worth without the arm. This is the stringency of vows of worth over uh, rock and vows. And the stringency of rock and vows over vows of worth is in what manner? If one said, I take upon myself to give my heir, and he died, the heirs must give it. But if one said, I take upon myself to give my worth, and he died, the heirs not give it. For the dead have no worth. If one says, I take upon myself to give the heir of my arm or the heir of my leg, he has said nothing. But if one says, I take upon myself to give the heir of my head or the heir of my liver, he must give the heir of his entire self. This is the rule for anything upon which one's life depends. He gives the heir of his entire self. If one says, I take upon myself to give half my Eric, he gives half his Eric. But if he says, I take upon myself to give the Eric of half of myself, he gives his whole Eric. If one says, I take upon myself to give half my worth, he gives half his worth. But if he says, I take upon myself to give the worth of half my, half my myself, he gives his whole worth. This is the rule for anything upon which life depends, he must give the Eric of his entire self. If one says, I take upon myself to give the Eric of so and so, even if both the vower and the subject of the vow died, the heirs must give it. If he says, I think about myself to give the worth of uh, so-and-so, and then if the vow died, the heirs must give it. But if the subject of the vow died, the heirs, um, the heirs need not give it, for the dead have no worth. Okay. The Choros, Aleph Dalad. If a donkey which had previously given birth and one which had not yet given birth or now bore two males, he must give one lamb to a Kohen. If they bore a male and a female, he must set one, some, one lamb aside for himself. As it states, the first point of a donkey you shall redeem with a saw. It may be of sheep and goats, a male or female, old or young, perfect or blemished, and he may redeem it with as many times he re- enters the pen to be tight. And if he dies, one may derive benefit from it. If one may not redeem a firstborn donkey with a calf, an undomestic beast, a slaughtered animal, a chafer, a hybrid, or a koi, the Elias permits redemption with a hybrid because it's a saw, but he pro- prohibits redemption with a koi because it is doubt- doubtful. If he gave it to a Kohen, the Kohen may not keep it until he sets aside a lamb or a kid in its place. If one set aside a lamb for redemption of a firstborn donkey and it dies, the Elias says one is responsible for it with the five selling of the son. The sages, however, say one is not responsible for it as with the redemption of Maisa Shani. Reb Yeshua and Reb Sadek testify concerning the, re- the redemption of a firstborn donkey that died, and there is nothing here for a Kohen. If the first donkey dies, the Reverend Elias says it must be buried and beneath, and benefit may be derived from the lamb. 
The sages, however, say it need not be burned, and the land belongs to the Kohen. Yeah. Seba. Yoshi Ben Honey says, sacrifices slaughtered for the Pesach designation or the Katas designation are invalid. Shimon, the brother of Azariah, says they were slaughtered, um, they were slaughtered for a designation higher than their own. They are valid for a designation lower than their own. So they are they are valid. Let me read that again. If they were slaughtered for a designation higher than their own, they are valid. The designation lower than their own, they are invalid. How so? Most holy offerings which he slaughtered for an offering of lesser holiness designation are invalid. Offerings of lesser holiness which he slaughtered for a most holy offering designation are valid. The Bekorah and the Maisa offerings which were slaughtered for the Shalom designation are valid. And Shalom offerings which he slaughtered for a Bechor or for a Maisa designation are invalid. The Pesach offering which was slaughtered in the morning of the 14th of Nisan for a designation other than its own, the Yeshua validates it as if it had been slaughtered on the 13th. The Ben Basar invalidates it as been slaughtered in the afternoon. Said Rashim ben Azai, I have received a tradition from the 72 sages on the day that they explained, uh, um, appointed with Elias ben Azariah to the yeshiva, that all sacrifices that are eaten, uh, which were slaughtered for designation other than their own, are invalid, that are valid. The mother are not credited, credited to the owner as performance of his obligation, except for a Pesach and Katas offering. The Azai added only the Ola offering that the sages did not concur with him. Uh, if one slaughtered a Pesach offering and a Katas offering for his designation other than their own or received their blood or conveyed it or threw it for a designation other than their own or for the designation or for the designation other than their own or for a designation other than their own as well as for their own designation, they are invalid. What is an example of for their own designation and for the designation other than their own? For a Pesach offering and a Shalom offering, I'm sorry, for a Shalom Designation. Uh, what is it? What is the example of a designated off, off designation other than their own as well as for their own designation? For a Shlomo designation and for a Pesach designation, for a sacrifice can be invalidated during any one of four things: during reception of the blood, conveying the uh, carry, conveying it to the altar, throwing upon the altar, uh, and throwing upon the altar. Reb Shimon says used to. Reb Shimon used to say it is impossible to make an offering without slaughtering, receiving, or throwing the blood. But it is possible without conveying it because one can slaughter the offering at the side of the altar and throw the blood there. If Elias has said, if one walks where he must walk, the intent invalidates, but if one walks where he need not walk, the intent is not invalid. Yeah. We are in Kedushin. Hmm. Himmel. If he said, on condition that I, base, that I have a base core of land, to the betrothed provided he has, has it. In addition, that I have it in a specific place. If he has it in that place, he is betrothed. If not, she is not betrothed. On condition that I shall show you a, um, a base core of land, she is betrothed, provided he will show it to her. If he shows it to her in a valley, she is not betrothed. But Mayor says any condition which is not like uh, the condition of the children of God and the children of Ruvain is not a condition. That's what it said. And Moses said to them, if the condition of God and the children of Ruvain will cross, and it is written, but if they will not cross zealously, Rabbi Kenina Benel says it is necessary for the matter to be stated because otherwise it is implicit that even in the land of Canaan, they did shall not inherit. If one beholds a woman and said, I thought that she is the daughter of a Kohen, the low she is the daughter of a Levi, or the daughter of a Levi and she is the daughter of a low Kohen, a poor woman and low she is a rich woman, uh, a rich woman and low she is a poor woman, she has betrothed because she did not deceive him. If one says, You are betrothed to me after I will be converted, or after you will be converted, and after I am free, or after you become freed, or after your husband shall die, or after your sister shall die, after you of him shall give you a talitza, she is not betrothed. Likewise, if one says to another, if your wife bears a female, she is betrothed to me. She is not betrothed if the other's wife was pregnant and her fetus was discernible. His words were effective, and if she bore a female, she is betrothed. Interesting, just that, just having that point. After your, your Obama, after your Yavam does, uh, does chalitza, so that's uh, actually um, that last case though is not the convention though because if if the if somebody if you all the previous ones were all kiddushin that's not going to take effect you can't you if he gives kiddushin to his wife's sister then he the kiddushin doesn't take effect but after his wife dies then it takes effect if you give kiddushin to a married woman it doesn't take effect or to a, a to a, a non Jew before she's converted it doesn't take effect but with a Shomeris Yavam, a woman who's waiting for Yibum or for Chalitza, 
if you if somebody else gives her a kedushin, that actually does take effect. It's, the tana of this Mishnah holds that it doesn't take effect, but actually the halacha is that it does take effect because uh, the kedushin the kedushin does take does actually take effect, and he would have to give her a divorce because of that. Okay. On to Mikvot. Yeah. Um, no, Erevin first. Erevin first, okay. Aleph. A valley that is higher than 20 Abbas must be lower. Stop. A valley? What did you say? An alley. An alley. An alley. An alley. Right. Okay. I thought you said valley. I did. Oh, okay. <laughs> An alley that is higher than 20 amas must be lowered. But Yehuda says he need not. And one which is wider than 10 cubits must be narrow. However, if it has the form of a doorway, even if it is wider than 10, um, uh, 10 cubits, it need not be narrow. The adjustment of an alley, Ben Shammai says, a pole and a cross beam. But a hill says a pole and a cross beam or a cross beam. But Elias says two poles. A disciple in the presence of Rabbi Akiva stated in the name of Rabbi Yishmael ben Shammai and based on that he did not, did not difference concerning an alley which is narrower than four cubits and it may be adjusted with a pole or a cross beam. Concerning which they did, did they differ? Concerning one which is wider than four cubits and up to ten cubits. Rabbi Shammai said a pole and a cross beam, but Rabbi Hillel said a pole or a cross beam. Said Rabbi Akiva, they differed in both cases. The cross beam of which they spoke it is wide enough to be uh, to hold an eric. And an, ar an arc is half a brick measuring three fists. It is sufficient for the cross beam to be one fist wide to hold an arc lengthwise. Okay. Yeah. And we're on to Mikros. Oh, is a uh, dollar. Yeah, Reb Elias was one brief, uh, of drawn water with the no. Reb Eliad says one rebus of drawn water disqualifies a mikvah at the beginning, but three lugum when they are on the surface of the water, on the surface of the water. But the sages say both at the beginning at the end of the amount is three lugum. If a mikvah has three hollows, each containing one log of drawn water, when it is known that 40 hollows mm -hmm. had already been fallen into the mikvah before they reach the third hollow, it is valid. Otherwise, it's invalid, but which is declared is valid because it is like one mikvah next to another mikvah. One moved mud to the sides and three lugum of water drained out of it. It is valid. However, if he removed it and three lugum uh, drained one, uh, one of it, and it is invalid. So if Shimon declares it valid because he has no intention to draw the water. And that's it. Thank you. Thank so you for waiting. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Wishing you a kasila of Yes. And right. uh, Mitz Hashem will see you on uh, Tzom Gedalia. Right. Um, and again, that oh, I'll, I'm not sure what my timing is going to be on Tzom Gedalia. I yeah, well, I, don't, I know where I'll be. I don't know how long it'll be. I don't know. How long. Yeah. Oh, things are before, so okay. we'll, we'll, be, we'll be in touch on the day. Okay. Have a great job. It's enjoy Rosh Hashanah. Thank Shabbos. you. Shabbos. 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 Shabbos.